This is a quick outline for the uh, initial setup procedure along with all the default settings that you'll be entering in the 10.3. So the first step that we do is we come over to the initial setup. In initial setup, we always go to the configuration first. In the configuration, we'll go down this uh, front line right here. Again, all the descriptions of what these different things mean are in a separate video. Um, so these are your default settings. They're also listed in the default guide sheet. Um, the big one to note here is this nozzle spacing. So the first thing, uh, before you even worry about nozzle spacing, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure the total number of nozzles that shows up in this box right here matches the total number of nozzles on the machine. So if you've got 143 valves on that machine, you need 143 nozzles to show up in this box right here. If you're not seeing that correct number of nozzles as to what's plugged in on the machine, then put the system in key fob mode, take your key fob out, scroll through the nozzles, figure out which nozzles uh, which nozzle or nozzles are not turning on or off and then get those repaired. Once you get those hooked back into the system and in order for it to redetect the total number of nozzles again, you'll need to come down here. Uh, I'm sorry, go back up. You have the factory reset button right here. Factory reset it. As soon as it comes back online, it's going to go on and redetect the total number of nozzles again. So again, Make sure the total number of nozzles matches the total number of nozzles on the machine. The second thing after you get the total number of nozzles right is to get your nozzle spacing entered correctly. It should be 25 centimeters. And then down here, um, the third step is these maximum task control sections. Make sure that you set those to equal to or higher than the number of nozzles that you have on the machine. So if you've got 143 nozzles on the machine, we might just set that to 145 task control sections. Your VT and task control is going to say AGCO instead of AG leader. I'm on an AG leader system here. So um, that gets the initial setup right here complete. Now, before we go any further with any settings, we need to back up in this menu and go into the VCM setup. So in the VCM setup, we need to make sure that these VCMs are oriented correctly. So this would be which way is the tube on the pigtail pointing? In this case, it would be tube pointed towards the center of the machine with the pigtail running out to the left. If that wasn't the case, we would swap ends. So you see that it would shift the VCM to the left instead of the right. If there were two VCMs in that section, you would have another option right over here that says swap positions. So we need to make sure the VCMs are in the correct order and that they're um, in the correct, or, I'm sorry, in the correct position in the right order across the machine and that they're also facing the right way. Once you get through the entirety of that VCM um, position and layout setup, again, get your key fob device out, go scroll through the nozzles and uh, make sure that they go left to right in sequential order across the boom. If they do not, you have an error in your VCM setup and you need to go through and get your positions orientations correct. So um, again, very important that we do this as a second step. Also very important that we confirm this with the key fob before moving on. Once we have those, those um, initial setup steps complete, we can go through and begin to enter in all the default settings for the machine. So um, number one uh, setup, you're going to come into boom nozzle. You're going to have uh, these nozzle bounds. So um, pretty much the default settings in here are where you're going to leave them unless you want to bring up this minimum PWM value. In nozzle setup, one of the things that this kit came with was uh, 15.5 valves where you are normally used to running 24.0 valves. So this default setting right here should be correct. And just note that you do have the black wire coils in that kit. They are the 15.5 series valves. So don't inadvertently put 24 in here like you're used to with the pinpoint two systems. Um, 
You put in your tip size also down here. You can name, you can custom name boom profiles if you want to. So if you click on that box, you're going to get a screen that pops up. Um, you can delete what's on there. And I'm just going to put T1 for test one. And then you'll see that you can actually name these uh, boom profile boxes. So you can go through here and set up your nozzles with your flow values for wheel track profiles or whatever it is that you would like to do and complete that step. Um, the other thing that we need to do in here is we need to do our soft boom assignments. So what our soft boom assignments do is basically it tells the pinpoint when you have the uh, five switches, uh, the five boom section switches on the knob and the cab. And this tells the pinpoint when switch one goes off, two, three, four, and five, which nozzles should turn off when that uh, when that uh, boom switch button is pressed. So you click on the soft boom. Again, in the setup guide, this is, I have 51 nozzles on this, not 143. So follow the uh, layout that's in your, um, in your default settings guide that you can download off of the web link. And you'll just go through this box. And if the first one was 20, you would enter 20 in there. And then you would just keep on going down through the line uh, until you got your soft boom entered, all your soft booms entered, you will have a total of five soft booms to correspond with the five switches that you have on the console. I'm going to X out of that so I don't save it to mine. Um, so that's going to get us all for boom nozzle. We'll come into the pressure menu next, pump setup. You've got a PWM 12 volt, Minimax servo 2378 is fine, 50. Um, pump seal shut down. Um, that value is fine. You could increase it or decrease it if you wanted to. Um, you'll leave all of the rest of this exactly as it sits. You have a minimum pressure, a maximum pressure, and a max flow. We typically leave those at zero. However, if you do want to program those values in, you can enter those values. Um, the rest of these will stay in their default position of alt disabled, normally open and disabled. And then we have our sensor setup. Um, only the sensor one setup here matters. You're going to have a 0.5 to 5 volt sensor that came with the pinpoint two that you'll be plugging into the pinpoint three, and it's a 0 to 689 kPa sensor. So um, the, the um, sensor two setup on this screen won't matter. We do not have a sparge pressure sensor plugged into it. The next one down is control tuning. Again, all of the default values are going to be just fine here. One thing to note is that with Pinpoint 2, you have been operating with Rate Sync. You will leave Rate Sync disabled with your Pinpoint 3 system. That ends us for our pressure setup. We go into our flow setup menu. Flow meter setup, meter one is correction. Um, meter one minimum uh, just says when, when the total flow gets below 11 liters per minute, it'll go into a calculation mode instead of looking at the flow meter. Enter your actual meter calibration in pulses per 10 liters. And um, as we come down here, if you have a fill flow meter, your meter two type will be transparent and make sure you get in that fill flow meter calibration number um, as it is on that particular flow meter. And um, the next thing is line number 13 right here. Do make sure that you come into this and get the flow meter sense resistor type set to pull up. The software is going to default it to pull down. So make sure we get that set to pull up. In control tuning, this is all going to stay the same. Um, no need to alter any of these settings. And display rate or duty cycle is just a feedback on the home screen. You can see a clip of that in some of the other how to operate a video. So that ends our flow setup. There's nothing to do within maps. Next, we have navigation. In navigation, we have vehicle. Um, it's a two-wheel vehicle. Boom type is fixed. Um, we have to set up the implement. Um, for your boom ahead or rear axle, um, your boom is going to be negative 168 centimeters behind the rear axle. The rest of those will be set to zero. Uh, ISO look ahead. This on time is going to default to 300 milliseconds. Make sure and set that back to zero so uh, that you have an on and off look ahead time of zero milliseconds programmed into here. Your GPS, G 
just go on and program all of those to zero. It's getting the terrain compensated uh, GPS message corrected over the rear axle from the VDO3 port. So we will not need to put those in there. And then your GPS source is going to be your ISO 11783. And compass, um, we will leave the compass disabled. The compass in pinpoint two was for um, uh, nozzle turn on and cornering operations or vehicle changing directions. All of the nozzle turn on and turn off is handled um, in your virtual terminal, your task controller or the ag control. So you'll leave the compass to disabled. We don't need that for nozzle shutoff detection because, again, the pinpoint is not handling that particular part the ag control is. So you'll do all of your nozzle on-off setup within the ag control environment. Gyro, you will set your gyro to enable. Um, again, this just gives us a little better reading than GPS alone on our turn compensation. If, you're, if you want a more aggressive or a less filtered turn compensation, you can turn on this contour mode, which makes turn compensation more aggressive, um, a little more jumpy um, as it's looking at the GPS and the gyro. And if you leave this disabled, again, it just filters it, makes it a little bit smooth, smoother per how you're turning. So uh, we do recommend the contour to disabled, but that is an operator preference type thing. So that ends our navigation setup. Um, you won't have anything to do in maps or NH3. And we've already been through the initial setup with the configuration in the VCM. So once all of those steps are complete, um, all the soft booms, all the VCM positions, you've gone out, you've sprayed with it, you've tested the performance to make sure that it's satisfactory. The very last step that we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to configuration. We're going to scroll down to the very bottom. We're going to go into this machine configuration and you're going to um, probably custom name a configuration for this so that we can save it locally to the controller. So I'll just put in T2 here, hit the checkbox. So now we have effectively saved this complete config that we have just done on this machine and we can reload it from here at any point in time. And once all that is done, we should have our pinpoint three setup complete.